1979, to my knowledge, is when University of Tennessee first established a radio station. And what do you know about that? And Well, don't know a whole lot about that because that preceded me by about four years here. So I was in Greenville, Tennessee, getting my kicks as far as, you know, knowing what was happening in radio and starting up here. But if you know anything about applying for a frequency on the radio dial with the FCC, it can take a couple of years. And before that, you know, what they may have done or what I think happened, and I know there was a there was another station involved too, and obviously UOT had been on already, so, um, but um, it may have been some sort of low power, almost kind of a, a lab type station uh, that they might have done through cable current or something like that even. But in the, the whole time, what they have done is applied, had the application through the FCC process, which again can take a couple of years easily to even be granted a license. So, um, you know, and I'm mean, trying to think what, what professor upstairs would know, but none are here that were there in 79. Dr. Swan's the closest, and he came in 83, I think, uh, a year after things. But he had a big role in turning the station around uh, as well for the better, and still does. But um, that, that had to be what it was, was some sort of almost a, a labs lab to get ready and, and to you know kind of start acquiring, because obviously the funding process then, it was a totally funded, and that takes a while to go through. If anybody knows a UT, there's layers to go through too. So probably they did their homework and they thought, okay, if we're going to sign this sucker on in 1982, early 80s, uh, we need to get something up and going now uh, so we can prove the FCC we're doing it and doing it right. Um, and, you know, 82 was a pretty big year around here anyway, so I'm, I'm thinking that was probably another reason to launch at 82 as well. When it first signed on at 82, it, um, it signed on obviously as a somewhat of a lab for the College of Communications at the time. And at the time you had uh, the School of Journalism, School of Broadcasting, which I went through, now they're combined. Um, and so you had that loosely as a lab. And I say loosely because at that time they really didn't connect classes to sending you down here. You just came down and were a part of it. You know, Todd Steed, WOT music director, it was our first music director in 1982. So I was a lonely teenage college student, which is uh, it's a great thing to be. and. When I found out there was a college radio station, I wanted to be a part of it. I just came down and said, I want to be a part of it. And there were people that said yes. And uh, I think they were desperate uh, for on-air personalities. You know, you could take like a 2 a.m. shift. Uh, sure, have as many of those as you want. And, uh, and me and a bunch of friends just and, and new friends just started loving it and just coming down and doing our shifts. And uh, after I was here a while, I, I just kept thinking like, you know, the smooth jazz they're playing is really painful for me personally, and I know that I'm inflicting pain on people when I play smooth jazz, and therefore as, as existentially uh, a crisis is occurring here. So I went into the, uh, the uh, graduate assistant who was the program director, director, uh, everything, and just said, Steve, um, you know, why don't we change the format and be like all the other college radio stations, you know, playing like good music? And he looked at me and he said, you know, you can't do that, you know, without a written proposal. I went, I would, I would be happy to write your proposal. So I think I hand wrote it and just wrote out a proposal about a format change and presented it to him. And then he went, okay, do it. And that was that. Uh, it, was, it was just, it was that easy. It was that hilarious. And you know the 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 college announcers were, were on board. Everybody wanted to do it, and we changed the format. You know, goodbye, goodbye, Kenny G. And so, really, it was loosely started as something that uh, would hopefully become more of a type of a unified type lab experience for the students. And it didn't really do that until, I guess it was probably 83, 84, when Dr. Swan came along and he signed on as one of uh, the advisors for the station, one of the chief advisors. He had had tons of radio experience in St. Louis and other, way, other places as well. And uh, so he was the one that literally introduced it into the curriculum 
that students should come down here and literally get class credit to work down here so that you tie it in with specific classes, uh, mainly an introduction to, to communications class so that you can get them as freshmen and sophomores and kind of help steer them uh, the direction down here and, and keep getting them better and better as they move along through the years if they want to stay down here. And so, so really, no, really it started out as more of a kind of a, you know, kind of like a lot of other college stations are where you just take anybody that wants to come down here and do it. There's no real method to the madness of connecting the majors with getting that practical experience and this lab experience uh, that they needed. Not yet, but then a couple years later, Dr. Swan came along and changed that to make it a, a very conscious effort to send the students down here and get that credit. You know, I had already started in radio uh, at my, uh, when I was in high school in Greenville. So uh, I'd started in 1981, 16 years old, went in to do an internship and they hired me part-time that day. So I'm like, okay, cool. I get credit and I get paid. Um, and I get to do what I love and let's play music, you know? And so, so I'd already had a lot of experience. And so that first, you know, I started here, uh, fall of 83. And so I wanted to get that college experience in. Hell, I was from Greenville, man. I was, <laughs> I was in a big city, you know? So I wanted to get some of that in and, you know, coach majors had the football team playing better. And there were some other priorities at the time, especially since again, I'd had that experience. Um, but then I came down to the interest meeting and sure enough, they signed me up to do Monday morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. winter quarter. So here I am walking in the dark from Greve Hall, you know, 5.45 every Monday morning uh, to be on 6 to 10. I signed the station on at that time. We didn't stay on all night. You would have to turn the station off at night turn it back on in the morning because he didn't have automation. So I'd crank that sucker up Monday morning and uh, get it rolling. And that was, like I said, winter quarter 1985 started as a, just a volunteer DJ. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, obviously, it was just really my, my what is, they signed on January 82. Uh, so, you know, they were on for a good year and a half before I uh, basically came to school down here and graduated in 83. So yeah, because I would come and yeah, back then, man, you could sneak into bars, and the drinking age was 18, so I was already 17. So, um, so yeah, I would come to the library, uh, the U Club, whatever you want to call it. It was on the strip, and, uh, you know, see people like Candy Cream and the Wet Dream, and I'd sneak in and go see them. But before you get to town, you know, when you get to Knoxville, there were two things to do if you're from Greenville. Turn it on WTK and, li and eat at Crystals, because we didn't have Crystals in, in Greenville. So those were highlights of my uh, of my youth, if you really want to know. So, yeah, was aware of the station, obviously, before I got down here. was stoked to be a part of it. But again, since I kind of had a jump start on everybody and experience, I wanted to get that college experience in first for a minute. Cause I knew when I stepped foot in this place, it was over. I'm like, this is where I'm gonna be spending most of my time from then on.